Welcome to EuroPCR 2025. I'm Cleverson Zukovsky from Rio, Brazil, and I have a pleasure to be here with Pablo Lamelas from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, we have uh, launched uh, just uh, have this launched about the guidelines of revascularization left main for Latin America, and with a simultaneous publication. Pablo, why do we need this kind of guidelines for Latin America? So thank you, Cleverson, for the introduction. And uh, basically, we need guidelines for every region in the world because recommendations are. Um, influenced by local realities, including resources, personal staff training, experience. So there is a clear need to uh, develop guidelines for every region in the world. Now, for the first time, we did it for Latin America in the case of the left main. And could you summarize the key aspects of this guideline? This guideline uh, has two aspects. First one, that we were able to create uh, a guideline from scratch dedicated to Latin America. So the, every aspect of the guideline is adapted to our reality in Latin America, but also compared to other guidelines, we were able to do two things. One is uh, we did a systematic review on patient values and preferences, in which in the case of left main revascularization is very important. We have to put in the table this information that prior guidelines mention about the, the need for patient values and preferences, but however, th they do, do not include the evidence on that regard. We did that effort with the systematic review uh, with more than uh, 5,000 patients about patient values and preferences, but, but was included in the guideline process. And also something that we did as well is that we uh, created uh, outcome thresholds for importance. It's not the same 10% reduction in mortality than 10% reduction in stroke, 10% reduction in major bleeding. And we did that using a systematic search on patient outcome utilities. So. Those two things make this guideline different beyond the uh, inclusion of patient values and preferences. And how can we apply this information in our practice, in our daily practice? So the main conclusion of the guideline is that across patients that present the clinical dilemma, should we do PCI or should we do cabbage, we can offer both procedures as far as the center has enough clinical experience or can perform both procedures with uh, adequate standards. That, of course, is a challenge in Latin America. One of the challenges we face is that not only the lack of information across centers, but the heterogeneity of the health systems. We have hospitals with a lot of experience, and one block just behind that hospital, we have another one treating the same patients and without enough experience. So the way we approach that is that, OK, centers that only can offer both procedures with adequate standards, that means a minimum volume, a minimum experience of the staff, can offer this recommendation. If not, you should do the, the intervention that you, your center has more experience. And if the center doesn't have any experience with both procedures, probably send the patient to another center. But basically, it's in patients that you are, have the dilemma, we exclude patients that are very elderly, those get PCI. We exclude patients with very high his syntax scores, those get cabbage. But if you have both options, then the heart team should lead the decision making with the cardiologist, with the patient, and get the, the, the most appropriate uh, course of action according to patient values and preferences. But there is no, uh, no preference for PCI or cabbage. Both are uh, reasonable options. OK. Then we can conclude that now we have uh, a specific guideline of revascularization left main for our reality that we can decide uh, between surgery or PCI regarding our uh, uh, hosp uh, hospital in local results, patient preference, uh, heart team decision making. I think we can uh, be in a, another situation with uh, we will have more uh, free to, 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 de to decide what, which treatment is best, the best for our patient. Thank Absolutely. You. In the past, we used to have just the guidelines from other regions, from other realities. So now we have our, 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 our clinical guideline. And also, we make this more transparent. In the past, uh, where other recommendations just recommended one thing or the other, doesn't give too much space to the patient to make a decision. Here, we make this transparent. We have to present all this information to the patient and with the patient make a decision. Like the same when you buy a car or, do, or buy a house, you don't just go directly and someone tells you what you should buy. You, the treatment you get now is a shared decision. And in the future, in the near future, we're going to develop patient decision aids to make this uh, a guideline more, more applicable. 
sure this guideline will help us a lot in clinical daily practice. Thank you. Now, thank you, Clarison.